Who was your co-worker from hell? She was a lady in her 50s. We worked at a DRS office. Nothing was ever her fault. She could not take even the nicest constructive criticism. And constantly complained about everything. One of my nicest co-workers ever. Who was around the same age so not an ageism thing. Often was the recipient of her blame and because she never took responsibility. It was regularly the same issues she never learned to correct. They bickered a lot after a couple years of this. One day the nice co-worker went to the car to grab her anxiety med. And the obnoxious one went to the office manager and then HR saying she thought the nice one went to get a weapon to hurt her. Like what? She didn't even own a weapon? And the nice one got fired. I was absolutely shocked. Any lingering respect I had for her was gone. I've had a lot of jobs and met some itty people but she was the most stressful nightmare who could boohoo her way into getting pity parties on cue. I used to work part time at a shipping warehouse and at one point, we ended up hiring this 16 year old kid. He made a ton of mistakes that we ended up having to fix for him. But I gave him the benefit of the doubt at first just because he was new. But not only did he never learn from his duck ups, but he was incredibly lazy and lacked any self awareness. There were instances where he was given a task, but then he'd either be around on his phone most of the time, hide out in the bathroom for like 45 minutes and then hoped we wouldn't notice, or just whine to my supervisor that he didn't want to do whatever he was assigned. Because of that, he would often take half the day to do like 30 minutes of work and would then complain that he had too much work piled on top of him. It was ridiculous. He lasted maybe a month before my supervisor let him go. My old boss could be really good, but here are some of the things leading up to her getting fired. She would berate people into taking her random vitamins. She would insist that we all attend her hot yoga class. She would get people to do it by putting them on the clock. She would pinch your arm if she didn't like what you were saying to a customer. I had to share a room with her at a conference. She slept naked. She got so drunk she went to hang out with a random couple in their room. Came back and puked all over our room. She would climb ladders in front of customers while wearing tiny dresses. And on and on and on. Edit. Wow I did not expect anyone to even react to this. Thanks for the silver. I worked at a fancy bath bomb store in the UK. No. She was not my type. My type is men. She would pit me and the other floor managers against each other. We would have to go to her apartment when we were on the clock to make the schedule. She didn't own a microwave because of the microwaves. I think she really hated our only male floor manager, probably because he'd applied for her job before she got it. He was no threat, so I didn't get why. Right before she got fired we had a team meeting in a park. Employees brought their dogs, smoked, and were downright mean to her. She brought it all on herself but it was awkward to watch. She had a few redeeming qualities, but her awful ones are much more memorable. I had a 50 year old colleague who would message women on sugar baby apps and rub one out over his trousers. Saw him blow his load in the open office. He sat next to me. Kept on happening. Reported it. He said he had a genital rash. But admitted to messaging people on social media. I got in trouble for my accusations. Fast forward 8 months. He's sitting opposite me now. He starts rubbing one out in the open office again. I recorded him. Showed my manager. And he was finally fired. He was a cunt too. Had an assistant who plotted to get me fired and take my job. Some of my workers let me know because he tried to get them on board with him. Eventually. Due to politics I was demoted but asked to be put on the shift for leaving him. We would work 12 hours shifts on weekends. After being relieved my phone a couple of times. Against the rules. I intentionally came in 4 hours early and he was nowhere on site. I still got a call from him when he should have relieved me like he was still on site. I let the guards know and they videotaped him and I got him fired. I quit smoking due to a co-worker that would follow me to every smoke break to talk about their problems when I needed some goddamn me time. It's been 3 years. And I still haven't bothered to pick the habit back up. Edit to answer some questions. 1. I rely I'm super introverted they just started joining me one day and decided I am their best friend ever. 2. They were trying to get me to smoke more often so they could talk at me more. They do not. And have never smoked. I was intending on quitting. At some point. But I would probably still be smoking without this factor. 3. They were very upset when I quit. 
so much that they started crying. I can never tell them they are the reason I quit even though I probably owe them my life. 4. I split the word goddamn for emphasis. God. Damn. 5. They are nice enough and want to be helpful but they are also oddly possessive and would get angry with me and mess with my stuff when I wouldn't go on breaks with them. Our shift would probably drown without this person. Very hard working. But I have spoken with management and been on the verge of going to HR over their weird control issues. They started escalating their behavior shortly before the pandemic hit. The one other person that tolerated their demands for an extended period of time got fired. Putting 100% of their focus on me. Luckily telling them they've crossed the line and refusing to engage with them for a day gets them to back off for the chance of having someone to talk to again. Working from home has been the best thing ever and I am worried about going back and having to figure out what to do with the dynamic. We had a sysadmin who would come to work and run his real estate business from his desk while he was supposed to be working. The whole time coughing and sneezing and sniffling constantly. We called him Chi. He would also call friends and family and have hours long conversations with them while we all had to listen. He picked up the nickname Thanksgiving dinner guy for using the break room. Full kitchen. To cook entire meals that wouldn't be out of place at a family gathering. One of the offices in another wing had a sheet by the door for people to log when they saw him and what he was cooking that day. He didn't like any of us. The feeling was mutual and left books like jerks at work on his desk. When he finally got fired, they found out he never did any of his sysadmin work. No backups. No password changes. No log monitoring. Had a co-worker who always gossiped about others and would say horrible things about everyone in the office. It created a super toxic culture and caused many people to leave. Not because they didn't like the work. They just hated the culture. I work with a woman who is threatened by other women. Especially if they are younger and have more education than her. She consistently tries to discourage women from furthering their education. And constantly tries to get women she is threatened by fired. She is a goddamn nightmare. Edit. After reading the comments. I am so sad to see that so many people have dealt with the same issue. I hope that you are all in better work environments now. Or will be soon. I briefly had a co-worker at my current job at a local grocery store. We'll just call him Fred. Fred is one of those people who's always talking on his phone in the break room and that's my personal pet peeve at work. More often than not. He's usually arguing with his girlfriend and he doesn't seem to care that anyone's listening. He'd do other annoying. Gross things like chewing with his mouth wide open and wiping his boogers all over the place. But then there was one day when he tried to flush a hot pocket down the toilet. Needless to say that it didn't play out so well and that temporarily put an end to our closest employee restroom right by the break room. He surprisingly didn't get fired over that. But he did get fired when one of his old high school teachers came in shopping and he threw a whole sack of potatoes at her. She was an elderly woman who got seriously injured and both the ambulance and the cops had to get involved. I never did hear about what happened to his old teacher. But Fred on the other hand is currently in jail for not only assaulting his teacher. But he apparently also attacked his lawyer for reasons uncount. That's Fred. I work shifts. Can't go home unless I pass over my report to the next person face to face. One particular itch loves coming in late. Not 5 or 10 minutes late. I'm talking 25 to 30 minutes late. Best part. She loves itching about how everyone is always on her ass for coming in late. She literally lives 5 minutes walk away from work. So no one knows why she's always late. Edit. This was when I worked in the IQ. I can't just abandon my patient willy nilly. He told the general manager that he might be a bit late for a shift due to his second job. When the GM reluctantly said okay. He apparently took this as thinking he had free reign to come and go as he pleased. He'd show up anywhere from 7.30 to 8.30 for his 7 o'clock shift. Then when the doors closed he'd insist he had to head out and he had an early morning the following morning. Leaving everyone else to do the closing work. He also had other issues like being rude to customers and other employees. People mostly kept quiet until one day a higher level manager had to sub on night shift. When he went to leave early and the rest of us with the work, the manager flipped. If you lay a ducking finger on that money before this work is completely done, don't bother coming back. The guy insisted he had permission and left anyway. When our GM returned and he tried to come back, 
Our manager said, you warned me you were going to be late one time. And I never once gave you permission to otherwise start late or leave early. Clean out your locker now. This woman who was one of those people who always had to one up you. Like if you cut your thumb off. She was just recently sawed in half. She was constantly complaining and miserable and it was so draining. She almost got me fired because she wanted to find the weakest looking guy to be her little errand boy. When I told her politely to go screw herself. She told HR that I had been taking work out of her queue in the system. It wasn't a very good lie though. Because why would I want to do more work than I have to? I even said this to HR in the disciplinary meeting. This was a person that was in the aircraft qualification training squadron at the same time as me. He wasn't an intentionally terrible person. But his lack of self-awareness made any interaction around him difficult and exhausting. He washed out of another flying career field. In the first sims, before the flying phase, he refused to use established procedures, resulting in degraded ability to provide required data to external players, managed to fail his first instructional ride. Despite it being nearly impossible to fail if you show up, he could not figure out how to take leave, despite several people walking him through the process, rather than trying to solve any problem. He would announce it to the rest of the room, and if no one jumped in to help him, asked the nearest person. He managed to frustrate and time jack the kindest instructor I know because he didn't have a basic understanding of a training airspace, in a bid to get back to more pressing, and more likely to be completed, tasks. He gave me an apologetic look as he suggested that LTP spotter was a smart student, and could probably help him get up to speed. I could not. He was in his 50s, had often uncontrolled diabetes, was 6 feet 4 inches tall, I was 24, and a foot shorter. Normally he was a teddy bear but when his blood sugar got low he would get violent. He tried throwing punches at me for suggesting he get a coke from the vending machine in the hall. Good thing he's slow and clumsy in that state. When we were in the truck together once, and it started making a weird sound. I wanted to take it into the shop and he insisted we didn't need to by yelling at me and pounding his fists on the dash. But we were going to a remote area and I didn't want to have to try and find help if the truck broke down and the radio didn't work. I had to call search and rescue on him once because he didn't come back to the truck after doing a transect biology job. You guessed it. He had low blood sugar and was not able to find his way back to the truck. He had no education or experience in biology. But he just couldn't be fired from his job driving a plow. With his propensity to let himself get hypoglycemic. He couldn't drive either, so they shuffled him to the wildlife department because he had an interest in wildlife. I was basically his babysitter. First day of work she lit her desk on fire. Second day of work she ate her lunch and broke out in hives. Third day of work she arrives at work and sat in her passenger seat until one of us went out to check on her. She claimed she hurt her back trying to pick up her purse and had one of her co-workers drove her home would not let us use the same microwave as her as she claimed she was allergic to garlic. The list went on and on, until she was fired. Oh Marion I wonder where you are now as you were so entertaining. A few years back at my old job we hired a web developer who on her first day on the job yelled at our CTO cause her mouse didn't work. She proceeded to be not just unpleasant but actively hostile to everyone she interacted with. I came in one morning at like 7am cause I needed to test some stuff and saw her at her desk eating a box of 711 wings and chugging a 2 litre diet coke. She then threw the box of bones into a bin and missed, spilling it everywhere and she yelled really loudly duck I'm goddamn it work while me and three others were in the office. We all gave her the benefit of the doubt of extreme antisocial programmer personality or maybe had personal problems to deal with and everyone tried to be nice. The last straw was when she berated at the most beloved guy in the office, one of the IT personnel that everyone liked, and she gave him a sort of schoolmaster style talking down to in front of the whole office cause her internet was slow. She was fired within like two weeks of hiring. Also she smelled like old eggs and mildew. We worked in a store that sold specific and fairly expensive products, and there were four of us working there, including the owner. The woman in question was basically his second in command. She seemed totally cool at the time. But then I got fired. And then a month later, our other co-worker got fired. So it was just the two of them. 
and when the owner was busy, it was often just her. It wasn't long before he realized that she was stealing hundreds if not thousands of dollars worth of products when he wasn't around and that she'd manipulated him into firing his two other employees so she could have the store to herself. He has new employees now and they're awesome. I plan on visiting a lot more once I'm vaccinated. An MMA fighter with serious PTSD, although it sounds like he was crazy and mean before he went to war. I have brownish skin. And he would threaten to kill me multiple times a day at work. Once he put me in a sleeper hole just to put me down for fun. And two other guys had to get him off. Guy was laughing maniacally the whole time. Sometimes he would hit me around the waistline when no one was looking. So no one could see the bruises. Threatened to kill me and my family members if I ever reported it. Our supervisor was an ex-army ranger. Whom I deeply respected. But he defended this guy through it all and I never understood that. Finally the guy got fired after two years and ended up in jail for a while. But those were two terrible years. The 50 something turd that was the owner's son. Spoiled brat. Reminded me constantly who he was if I stood up to him. Creepy as hell too. Could never just tell any of the women they look nice. Actually told me one day that my legs looked nice. I was wearing a skirt. That was the last time I wore a skirt to work for a long time. I immediately started looking for a new job within a month. There were so many other things that occurred I was turned off from working for a small family owned business since. Girl I worked with when I was a personal shopper. She tried to get me fired a couple of times because she saw I was moving up faster than her. We both got sent to work at a different location for a couple of months and she went around bad mouthing me to anyone who would listen. So they thought I was a right employee and she was amazing. I proved myself with my work ethic and they realized she was a liar and it definitely changed their opinion of her. I ended up going to a different location and when she went back to our original location she continued to say horrid things about me. My co-workers took my side and called her out on her BS. She left not long after on a bad note with them. This one co-worker changed how I approached working. I was in the workforce for a decade when I decided to take a job with a very small, woman-owned company. It was just the owner and two employees, myself included. I worked my ass off and was very successful the first few months. And soon the other employee started to brazenly slack off, eventually calling an often, with what became the lamest excuses. Weekly, once she was out for almost a month because of a vague family issue that I'm convinced was made up. Our boss was so lenient because my co-worker had been there for years. I ended up working harder and extra hours, even weekends, to keep our clients happy and the business going strong. Which I so realized just enabled my co-worker's itiness. I quickly burned out, got the hell out, and never let any person or business ever exploit me and take advantage of me ever again. Duck you. Becca. This woman named Lori used to be an operator at my work. I've since replaced her. I worked as her assistant for two years. She always made the job 10 times harder than it was and would very rarely pay attention to the trim system on the winder. Causing many 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 paper blow ups, huge pain in the ass to clean up. Every shift I knew I'd be working my ass off for a solid 12 hours. Looking back, I get why she was the way she was. She was literally the only woman employed on the production floor and was constantly trying to prove herself. She eventually just got so fed up that she stopped caring. Near the end of her time there, we actually got quite close on a personal level. Some of the stories she told me about what some of the guys would do to her actually made me so sad for her. So what started as my co-worker from hell is now actually one of my good friends. Funny how things work. The guy who touched himself the entire time I was doing the unbowed packet with him immediately comes to mind. We had a middle-aged lady that smelled like tuna. I was a manager and had to send her home one particularly hot day. I also had to put her chair outside after she left as it still smelled. It was such a shame as she was a really nice lady. She just ducking stank. Not as bad as some, but I'll never forget the 22-ish year old girl who spent hours of one shift telling me, with no prompting at all, about how she used to be a raging heroin addict but she was over it now and had become extremely religious. She went into very explicit detail about her drug deals and the things she'd done to get to drugs. My shy homeschooled ass was stunned. 
The very next day she got fired for stealing $20 from the cash register. In civil service, there was this one woman who, 1. Actively hit other people. 2. Changed entered times on timesheets without the original party's consent. This is a huge no-no legally. 3. Sabotaged my work and other people's. No matter how many complaints we submitted, she was never fired. Rumor had it she was never fired because she had some serious dirt on the administration, the kind that shouldn't be leaked to the press. My manager a few jobs ago, it was a tech company, we were the marketing team, which really just meant digital marketing. She had a very loose grasp on how our various tech platforms worked, and one day said to me when discussing her exasperation at posting a YouTube video to our brand channel. I don't really understand the internet. She was dead serious. It was 2014. She was ultimately fired. I win this one. She made a pot of coffee for the staff but spiked it with meth. Back when I used to load trucks. We had a dude who lasted exactly two, two, days on the job. His first day, he seemed normal enough. His second day, he came in drunk as duck. A real no-no when you are working around heavy equipment. And instead of getting down to business he just kinda did around doing a half-assed job. Thereby making everyone else's job harder. And making crude sexual jokes about the other workers on the line. And when the line supervisor told him to knock it off and do his job he told her to stop being rich. Thank duck the jackass did not come back because we all wanted to kick his ass after that day. This woman who hated me and always had to be better than me. It was awful. First time I have ever cried at work. One day, I caught her in a bold faced lie. I had taken a day off. She said when I returned that the boss had asked questions about where I had been on my day off. My boss knew exactly where I had been, I knew because I had told her, so I knew this was a lie and she was just being nosy, called her out. She had no response but tears about how I was mean to her, it was very satisfying to see her caught in a lie by the boss after years of lying to and manipulating her co-workers. I was a co-worker from hell, I was real strung out and high all of the time, and a bad influence on my other co-workers, much regret. Okay. This may not be my most hellish co-worker, but I have a weird one for you guys. My first ever job was at a coffee shop chain. The location I was at was connected to a gas station convenience store. We kinda had an L-shaped corner of the store. As such, we didn't have a ton of space, including room for the larger ovens needed to cook bagels. So instead, we would have our bagels delivered to us from another, larger, location down the road. For a while the baker was this really weird, quiet girl who seemed to lack social self-awareness. She always seemed a little unclean and just lingered a little too long around people without really saying anything. Honestly she just put out not quite right vibes. Anyway, one day I head in at 6 and there are no bagels. I ask my manager if the store down the road was running behind or if they had a call out. Both were fairly common. My manager points to the rack of newspapers the convenience store had by the entrance and tells me to read the headline. Apparently the weird girl was in FBI custody. Basically there was a couple who had kidnapped a minor. I won't get into why, as it may be a TW for some. Weird girl was renting a room from the couple, knew what was happening and never told anyone. Somehow they were all found out and arrested and the young girl was reunited with her family. Reading the story. The whole thing felt very Twilight Zone. They acted like a friend in broad strokes. But over time the little things showed that it was all a bullet. The one incident that sticks out to me to this day is when I told her that my mum was hand making my wife to be's wedding dress. Most people respond with some variation of oh that's so cute and it's a fun moment. This itch. She said couldn't you afford a proper one? Not such a fun moment. My boss. He always talked about other employees behind their backs when they left the room. They told me bare minimum of any task the workstation required. Poor communication. Disinterested in literally everything. Treated details as something obvious I should have somehow known. ETC ETC. The most awkward work day ever. Worked with a guy that was a supervisor in another department. Dumb and an asshole. Bad combo. 
would constantly insist that I do things that violated OSHA rules or were physically impossible. Wanted me to work on a 20 ton bridge crane while he was using it. Obviously I said no. Every time I would refuse one of these ridiculous demands he would send out an email with everyone CCD. From the area manager. Plant manager all the way down to my boss. Soon after I left for a better job. He was fired. And they closed his email account as he was writing a manifesto. I heard they hired armed security to keep a lookout for him for the next month. Edit. I forgot to mention that this supervisor was missing most of his front teeth. He came back to work after a vacation missing teeth. Told everyone it was an auto accident or some crap. His cousin worked there at the time and told everyone there was no auto accident. That the two of them were at a family barbecue. While this supervisor got drunk and started running his mouth and I guess kept ragging on about a relative's wife. And long story short the relative ended up on top of him pummeling his face and knocking out teeth. He was the kind of guy that everyone fantasized about punching. Rick the misogynistic D. He was my lead 4 years ago. I am a female engineer. The only one on that team. He was always checking my work and send someone out with me. I thought but was because we had never worked together before. Then one day in a group meeting with the entire group. He said women don't make good engineers because they can only make decisions based on emotions. Everyone's jaws dropped and they looked at me. I was so shocked. All I could come up with was yeah. Because that is how I figured out how much to put into my 401k. I left the group. He invited me to his retirement party. I told him I was happy he was retiring. He thought it was a compliment. My current worst co-worker is a lady that always has the attitude of you're wrong because you don't understand. There are two of us ladies now but she's annoying. Not horrible though. So that's a big step up. This one that thought she knew everything and would steal people's comments. You'd tell her a fact and then she disagrees. I was talking about arrested development and blah blah blah. She stole that conversation. I told her about me going to a festival. She went to and had the exact experience. Someone asked if I was a fish because I was chugging water. She asked me the same question later. She'd say a random fact that everyone knows about and make it out to be like she just discovered it. She'd argue with people who knew more about a certain topic like she was an expert. She talked too much it. Almost go fired for it. Wish she did. Embellishes stories to get people in trouble. She's mildly racist and a hypocrite. What made it worse was when she did something offensive. And we went to the manager. The manager. Also mildly racist. Would defend her and say that's just who she is. She's the reason I left a decently good job. Got too toxic and it wasn't worth staying. She told our boss that she wanted to break into my apartment and touch all of my stuff because I bet it's all really cool. This was right after I found out she'd moved into the apartment next door. She would send stuff to my apartment just so I would put it on her stoop and knock on her door.